Coleman High School was actually built in 1994. In 2000, there was an expansion to, to help fill the capacity for our instructional space. What's come since then is we don't have enough core and support area spaces within the building. Um, and these needs have actually been long-standing needs. Um, there was a study done in 2012 that actually identified these needs then. Classes entering the high school are much larger than the classes that are graduating. So we want to be prepared and have enough space um, where the students can comfortably access and have room within the building. But we did a study building-wide, got our staff together, to kind of find out re really where are the pressure points and what we're experiencing. However, our core spaces, such as our kitchen, our commons area, there's not a whole lot of, of space to move or do things structurally within those spaces. So we need to do something differently. You know, we're using spaces that aren't traditional class classroom spaces, um, but we're just running out of space to put, put folks. The referendum consists of two questions. The first question is for 23 and a half million for facility needs at our high school. Um, it involves additions, remodeling, and ventilation for the, the high school. And then question two is uh, for asking for 460,000 um, recurring to provide dollars to maintain and operate the actual 70,000, over 71, thousand square feet of additional space to the high school. The school board um, has a long-standing tradition and really works hard on their financial planning and so they are able to deliver this referendum with no net increase to the school property tax rate. So there would be no change in the taxes for our taxpayers. Yeah, at lunchtime it's usually pretty packed. I mean all of us are sitting pretty much elbow to elbow and when you're trying to walk through the way or in between the tables it's pretty hard. You kind of gotta weave your way or either just walk around the entire lunchroom. One thing that our students in our um, school experience a lot of anxiety with and that we see daily um, causing stress to our students is lunch. Socially lunch is really important for our kids. It's a time for them to let down during the school day. And one of the stressors that we hear is that they don't know where they're gonna sit. They have, are they gonna have to sit on the floor? Are they going to have to sit in a different location? Are they gonna have a seat with their friends? And so even with this referendum and the expansion of the lunchroom, that is one way to decrease the stress that we see in our office every day. We have a 30 minute period. Um, so our goal is to try and get them through in 10 minutes, but with the space we have to have them come through and be served and check out, um, some days that's virtually impossible. And that ends up tailing down the hall past the, the student store uh, into the dining room. So we have lines that go into the dining room. Um, and then the dining room itself is packed wall to wall. I, I, I feel it's, it's more kids than safely should be in one area. Um, there's really no good way to get in and get out. Our freezer, our cooler storage in general, um, for the amount of students that we serve on a daily basis, there just is not adequate amount of space to store the quantity of the food we need to bring in. Um, so it's a constant struggle putting our food on carts, um, to because we don't have enough shelf space and then if you want something off a shelf you have to pull five carts out to get to that what you know so that's a constant struggle. Our freezers and coolers at the high school are the second smallest in the entire district. Um, all of our elementary schools have actually more cold storage space than we do here at the high school even though we're feeding three times to four times as many kids um, which causes issues with ordering we have to order basically on a weekly basis and hopefully move most of the inventory out and, and bring new inventory in every week. This is my eighth year here in Holman. Uh, my first year we had 77 students enrolled in band. This year we have about 145. Our room is obviously too small. Professionals say that for an, an ensemble of 75 students you should have 2,000 to 2,500 square feet of space. Um, our current band room is 2,097 square feet. So, and we are putting 145 kids in that space. So it's 
Um, you know, majority of the floor space is taken up with, with seating, chairs and music stands, leaving very few walkways. Um, so it takes a lot of time for the kids to get ready and to put things away at the end of rehearsal. We don't have adequate instrument storage and just struggling to find a home for, for all of those instruments. So I'm gonna grab it like this. The, the weight room has been reconstructed and reconfigured many times since I've been here in 10 years and the reason why we keep having to uh, move things around is just because we have so many kids that want to use it. Um, typically right now in the morning there, there's well over 100 kids in the weight room and I don't know what the capacity of that space is but I would say having 100 or more kids is very unsafe. So the, the reason why we have to configure things is just so we can have some flow, some function. I think we're completely maxed out on what we can do with the space. Now we just need that space to be bigger so that we don't get somebody hurt. Um, too, too many people crowded in one area. It's packed in there. There's, like I said, 20 kids on a rack sometimes and you're not even getting in your full workout because of how many kids are on that rack. The gym space is premium. We find that we are having to bus kids, uh, programs, uh, teams all over the district to access gyms in our elementary schools uh, to find space. We have to have practices late at night. I teach an adapted PE class, um, which is students with a wide range of uh, learning needs, um, disabilities, and uh, I usually get displaced out into the lunchroom or in the commons here at the high school, and that's. Since I started five years ago, that's kind of been, you know, my gym, I guess you could say. Um, it's not ideal, but it's, it's what we have right now. Another big variable that we overcome here is the, the 400 wing doesn't have air conditioning. So uh, that's all three gyms, the, the trainer's room, um, some of the, the band facilities and um, music facilities. The, the weight room, the locker rooms, they don't have AC. I would think that the, the temperature in the gyms at some days gets up between 80 and 90 degrees and there's definitely days where you open the door and it's cooler outside than it is in the gym. Typical wrestling practice for us um, doesn't begin when we want it to begin. We, we begin moving mats. Um, and that requires a lot of manpower. It's not just when one or two guys are ready they can start moving them. It requires a, a team effort to pick these mats up. Um, they're stored on top of a shelf in, in a mat room and we have to tip the mats down, um, carry them out, unroll them, um, tape the seams together, wash them, and then we can begin practice. Um, the typical amount of time that's needed for a mat to dry to kill all the bacteria and fungus and different things that could be on the mat is, is recommended to be 10 to 15 minutes. We're losing at least a half hour per, per practice on setup and, and takedown. So currently, there's no, no space in the district that has a designated wrestling area. Well, we're really short on storage space in this school. Uh, as our numbers have grown, uh, we've added on classrooms, but we haven't added on co-curricular spaces, in particular storage spaces. Uh, we basically have one main room where we try to house all our gymnastics equipment and all our wrestling equipment and our volleyball equipment. And if you walk into that room, uh, what you'll see is equipment stacked 15 to 20 feet in the air. Uh, we've got multiple shelving areas and every inch of that space now is used. So our student services office is really a hub of activity um, for our students. Um, and as our enrollment has increased, um, the hub of activity in our office is um, very busy. Some concerns as we've grown have um, been able, is just being able to provide our students with a confidential setting where they feel safe um, and where whatever they're bringing to us um, they trust is being addressed as um, in a confidential way. Yeah, we currently have our school social worker in a completely different wing opposite from us in the school. Same thing with our school psychologist, a completely different wing. So when we have a student who's in crisis, who's feeling anxious, who's depressed, we don't want them having to um, go to a different area of the building that might have zero confidentiality. What's the key item? Take pictures. Some of our current problems right now in our technology education department are uh, space, uh, ventilation, 
our welding shop, for example, uh, the ventilation is uh, not, not adequate. Uh, we have a lot of uh, black residue from the welding fumes that are on top of the pipes and around the shop. Uh, the air quality, especially when we have large, larger class sizes that come in, the ventilation is not adequate to take that exhaust away. Uh, in our wood shop too, and we have issues with the sawdust and being able to uh, re remove that particulate out of the air and keep the air uh, cleaner. We want to be elite for our students so they can be the best they can be. We want to be elite for our community and our staff really does everything that they can do. Think outside the box. They're creative in ways that we can do things to serve our students, to serve our families. And yet we can, you know, we can be better. And if you can imagine that. And if we're given the tools to do the things that we can help our students flourish and grow um, beyond uh, home and high school once they leave here, uh, I, I think that's an important piece to look at. We are so thankful in the school district of Holman to have such a uh, community that is so supportive of our students and our children. Um, Every time that we have gone out and asked for support, people always come together. 